Okay, in this activity, you have your tumble buggy, and your goal is to find the average speed of your tumble buggy by collecting data. So, hopefully, you have collected position and times, and you can graph the position or the distance that the tumble buggy covered on the vertical axis, and on the horizontal axis, you can graph the time in seconds. So I'm going to put distance on my vertical axis because I don't really care what direction it was going. Some of you may have had your tumble buggies going left. Some of you may have had it going to the right. And distance should be measured in meters. We're going to use the SI units. And hopefully your data looks something like this once you graph it out. And that shows a very consistent motion. I can draw a best fit straight line through those data points. Remember, a best fit straight line goes through most of the data points with having the same number above and below. Now from math class, we learn y equals mx plus b. That's the equation for a line. In our case, the y was the distance. M, and I'm going to use the word slope here because M later will be mass and it can be meters. It's just really confusing. So I'm going to use the word slope. And then on our X axis, we have time, so T. And hopefully your Y intercept is really close to being zero. So your B should be really close to being zero. So then we get an equation that's D equals slope times T plus zero. Now what does that slope represent? So for math class, slope was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in our case, that would be d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. Now our units for this would be meters per second. We always need to choose two points that are on the line that are not data points. So notice that I chose two points on the line and I circled them, but notice they are not data points. That is so important. Now I do know that my line wound up with all the data points going through the line crazy enough. But whenever you are graphing anything, it is imperative that you use two points from the line you drew and not two data points. So then that gives us our units of meters, and time is in second, meters per second. And officially, that is referred to as the speed. So the slope of a distance time graph is speed. Now the symbol we use for speed is a soft looking V. So if I rewrite the equation, I'll have distance equals V, representing speed, times T. And this is just the equation of the line, Y equals MX. So writing the equation of a line that you have created with your data is really an important concept and skill for physics. We're going to be using this a lot this year. Now, if your cart was moving to the right, 
then the distance that it was traveling and its displacement would be in the same direction. So I have x naught as being our beginning position and x as being our final position. So our displacement would be x minus x naught. The little o is a naught symbol, meaning nothing or the beginning. It's used often in physics. So displacement is a vector, and it is in meters per second. And if I were to graph this displacement versus time, in the case of our little tumble buggy, it would look like the distance time graph. Moving to the right, the nice constant speed. But now I know the direction. So when I write the equation for the line, the slope would be the change in position over the change in time. So delta x is the change in position, which is our displacement. So the equation for this line would be delta x is equal to vt. But this case, because I know the displacement is positive, so it's moving to the right, it, the slope is not speed, but it's a Greek symbol nu, v, looking thing. This is speed with direction. That's a vector meaning it has magnitude and direction, and that's velocity. So you, when you know the speed and the direction of an object, then you know its velocity. If you just know how fast it's going, all you know is the speed. If you're moving to the right, that velocity would be positive. If you're moving to the left, it would be negative. So speed is how fast. But velocity is how fast and in what direction. Speed is what we call a scalar, meaning it's just magnitude or number. Magnitude is a fancy word for number. A vector, which velocity is a vector, vector is the number and a direction. Remember, uh, number could be substituted for the word magnitude, so as you're reading questions, if they ask you to find the magnitude of the velocity, then you're just looking for the number. That means the question is not asking you for the direction. So magnitude, you could substitute a synonym for magnitude would be amount. So sometimes if you're reading a question, you should substitute that synonym in and it may seem easier. Alright, let's look at another scenario. Draw a graph of displacement and time. Now the cool thing about displacement is it tells me the direction that an object was moving. So let's say 
that we had our tumble buggy moving to the right and then it stops moving and then after it stops for just a moment it turns around and comes back to its initial position so tumble buggies will actually run into the wall crawl up the wall flip over and come back so now I have three segments one where I have a positive velocity meaning the object was moving to the right Segment two, the slope of that line right there, you should recognize as being zero. There's no velocity right there. And then for segment three, the object is moving backwards or to the left, whichever you prefer. And for math class, the slope of that line should be a negative slope, so that gives us a negative velocity. I know the object's moving to the left or moving backwards. So, moving at a constant speed, stopped, turned around, and came back. Now, the difference in a displacement time and a distance time graph would be that distance time graph would simply show how far the object was moving. So, in the first segment, second segment, remember distance doesn't give me which way it was going, just how much was covered. So even if you go backwards, you're still covering some distance. So think of a distance time graph as maybe being like an absolute value time graph. The absolute value of your displacement. And in all three of those segments, the speeds are positive. We get a lot more information out of a displacement graph So position, or change in position, is velocity times time for constant velocity, constant speed type problems. So V, this V, stands for velocity. It's a vector measured in meters per second. T is time measured in seconds. It's actually a scalar. Time has no direction. Time cannot be left or right. Measured in seconds. And then delta x is our displacement, also known as change in position. Again, synonyms. It's a vector. And it's measured in meters.